Hello and Hi. good morning. Hi. Let's, Hello uh, from Borneo. Yes, we're back again with another travel talk and a coffee break. And uh, this week we have Destination Asia continuing. And um, I'm going to talk with um, Anna Marie from Borneo um, to see how uh, things are going on the, the little island, which belongs actually, of course, to, uh, to Malaysia. So welcome, Anna Marie. Thank you. It's nice to have a chat after so many months. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We just talked before we went uh, live here, we just talked about how uh, you actually see a couple of tourists over at yours and, and it's... Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. It, it, was, uh, it was really refreshing because uh, after the uh, coming to 24 months also, the past few months I've been stepping out a bit, um, going around, you know, so it was really uh refreshing to see some uh, visitors like something i was so used to before so stepping out of the house these days is pretty normal we need yeah. to have our mask and of course wherever you go we have the app to scan ourselves and um also the government has encouraged all of us to have our vaccination and uh, most of us are already heading up for the third booster uh, vaccination we can walk into any clinic any health center and it's uh, free so I personally had my third jab. I was a bit nervous about it, but uh, it turned out fine. Uh, no, uh, no funny feelings or side effects at uh, at all, actually. Yeah, yeah. And so. that's that's very good, actually. To that um, that also you see uh, you are getting vaccinated in in Malaysia and Borneo as well. So uh, since it's kind of on an island and a, w a bit away from you know the mainland, uh, it's, it's good to see that they're getting vaccinated because I think that's part of what people also are a little bit worried when they travel, maybe yes. that um, yes. if the people are vaccinated, where they're going to as well. Because um, yes. even if we are vaccinated, we can, of course, get the, get the uh, um, virus coming around. Like oh, we yes, see yes. around at the moment, there's outbreaks everywhere, even though populations are 80 or 85 percent vaccinated. So we still, yeah. you know, having that. But we're actually going to talk a little bit more on Borneo. Like I said, first of all, because people probably think that, okay, Borneo is not reachable these days because of everything is closed and borders is closed. But like I talked about, it is reachable, but it, it just demands a little bit of work, basically. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So uh, on uh, in a normal situation, to get to Borneo is very easy, really. Uh, I think flying out from Copenhagen, you can go straight to Singapore or Kuala Lumpur. Okay, uh, nowadays some people like to go via Dubai even, and there are a lot of air links to Malaysia via Dubai as well. Uh, <clears throat> when you get to Singapore or Kuala Lumpur, to get to Borneo is almost the same time, around two and a half hours. Okay, so you cross uh, to the South China Sea to the island of Borneo, which is Eastern Malaysia. Borneo itself is actually uh, shared by uh, three countries, actually. So uh, I'm actually located at the northern part of Borneo, which belongs to Malaysia. Malaysia uh, has two states on the island of Borneo, which is uh, Sabah, where I am, northern Borneo, and at the south uh, westerly part, which is Sarawak. In between us is a little country that's very well known in the world, uh, Brunei, one of the richest men in the world lives on the island of Borneo and on the eastern side uh, belongs to Indonesia where the new capital of Indonesia is uh, being visioned and uh, going to be up and coming very very soon in Kalimantan so that's in brief about Borneo Island okay yeah. so why Borneo uh, because uh, we are one of the few places even Malaysians race to uh, come and visit us having uh, our very own signature destinations. In this uh, island, when you get here, you land at Kota Kinabalu, that's the city, okay, uh, the capital of uh, the northern part of uh, Borneo. And uh, from here, you can go all around. For instance, uh, one of the popular destination is to actually visit wildlife in their natural habitat. And with that, you just travel to the east coast to Sandakan, where you will actually be able to see um, things like the orangutan, which is only found in Borneo and uh, Sumatra Island in the world. And they are also extinct. And they are one of the closest um, uh, primates to human, almost 90%. 
Yeah, so to, to see these um, uh, animals, you can see them naturally. We have a rehabilitation center for them because they are endangered naturally, uh, being coming to extinct. And other than that, another popular um, uh, and one and only animal you can find on Borneo is the proboscis monkeys, where they have huge long noses and huge bellies. So those are found living naturally along the riverbanks. Uh, of the Kinabatangan River, which is the longest river in Sabah. And on this river, you can stay for maybe two nights or even up to a week if you enjoy um, viewing wildlife. You can go on scheduled cruises certain times of the day to spot the animals. And you can actually see these uh, proboscis monkeys living naturally in the trees and having a good time. You can sit there and just uh, watch them, uh, whether at towards sunset or early in the morning. And uh, around there, because it's also a uh, um, uh, protected area of the forest, we are also home to the well, smallest elephants in the world. The species are dubbed as the smallest, even smallest than the Thailand elephant, and obviously very, very much smaller than the African elephant, which is the Borneo pygmy elephant, only found along uh, the rivers here and nearby forests uh, of uh, Sabah. Yeah, and um, there are numerous more. Uh, many people come for bird watching. If you enjoy uh, the, watching birds in the outdoor, come to the tropical rainforest because the birds are much more colorful and uh, it's quite interesting to watch them in the treetop canopies. We have places you can go early in the morning to look for birds that birders tick off their list. They travel around the world to just look for these particular birds. and. One of them is known as the Bonian bristlehead. It's a bright red color bird. And uh, of course, the head has a bit of a uh, brush-like looking. So people wake up in the morning, go in the canopy walkways to look for that. And Malaysian forests are... Yeah, can I just interrupt you a little bit? Yeah, sure. One? Yeah, no, no, I was thinking because, of course, here you've got a lot of like um, wildlife or out in, in the wildlife as well. So you, like you're saying, for the, for the orangutans, um, the monkeys, the, the elephants, the birds. Um, so you have different trips with also, but some people can be scared a little thinking, oh, that's not for me because I'm not a good walker or, um, uh, oh. you know, I'm not um, an outdoor kind of people. But of course, there's different varieties in yes. how you can do this as well. Yes, it? yes, yes. Um, for instance, I, when I was talking about the river, we have various types of accommodation and uh, you there's even a lodge uh, uh, called the the unique one of the unique lodges in the world by National Geographic along our riverside. Yeah, and um, it it has uh, various types of accommodation from uh, budget to mid to deluxe. So of course uh, the National Geographic lodge is uh, more on the deluxe side. So it's even ideal for honeymooners because you'll definitely have a, a totally different experience, not like uh, sunrises and sunsets by the beach all the time. Uh, sunrises by the river is very romantic as well when the clouds lift up in the morning and you have your coffee in the boat and wanting to see the animals. And to top that, actually um, the Borneo rainforest is actually known to be uh, the oldest tropical rainforest, about 140 million years old. And we are also home to where, being such an old forest naturally, also the world's tallest tropical tree, right? Where in all these green and animal things are. So the level of going to visit the animals and experiencing the rainforest, we have vast experiences for you. If you are a bit on the luxurious side, no worries. We have Denham Valley with the Bonio Rainforest Lodge. They have beautiful chalets. You can have nicely cooked dinner. You can actually have uh, even a margarita in the forest or mojito. They actually have a bar <laughs> there. After a long day's trek, you can uh, enjoy by enjoy, the bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, because I've I've experienced that myself with the client. So we 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 look forward to the end of the day after walking and looking at things and said, oh, we we talk about what we're gonna have for happy hours after that. Okay, exactly. so you don't need to worry that you'll be in the forest and you will be sleeping in tents all the time. We, because if you want that, we have that. If you if you prefer to be on the luxurious side, we also have that. So generally time spent in the uh, experiencing the rainforest and see the animals around three three nights 
or even two nights depends how long you want to go and some people go up to almost uh, a week of course they travel from different places to another yeah and traveling around you can go by road some yeah. parts by river and then by road but to get to the point you can take a flight so you don't have to worry but if you're more adventurous you want to take the local transport and all that it's not a problem you are easily connected information is easily available for you yeah so we can cater to young um, adventurous travelers or to those that really just want to go away and uh, they've maybe been to the uh, safaris a thousand times and they wanted to do a different kind so they can come over to Borneo exactly and yeah. I know of course because I since myself have been for a long time ago I've been to Borneo as well and of course you've got the long houses so that's an yes. experience as well so you can actually I think for those who's very adventurous can even overnight yes yes but, <laughs> actually but, uh, it's yeah. a possibility to do a day trip and, and visit these long houses as yes well. yes depending on which part of Borneo uh, yeah. if you talk about uh, people the tribes um, we are we it's two different areas you can experience them so long houses are found at the very northern tip of Borneo Island and towards the middle interior and all the way down the southwesterly uh, part of the Malaysian part of Borneo um, we still can see them today but uh, the, the houses the the structure is the same you know each house could probably have a minimum of 20 to 30 units of rooms where each family lives in them and it's a whole communal thing and some houses go up to 50 rooms uh, and uh, structure of course will be a bit more than these days the nearer access to the towns or where roads are we have we actually have cable tv and and the government gives them uh, power supply yeah so people have also advanced in that but the living style of these people remains they are very close-knit family the youngsters still go out to the city to work but uh, in the recent probably 10 to 15 years we have seen uh, the younger generation like um, wanting to go back to the community and to develop uh, the community for instance um, uh, things they plant like pepper it's also well known to be from Borneo itself. So uh, little um, industries like this, uh, things that they produce from the from the back of their houses, the hills, uh, people are going back to 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 that part of life again. So we have some kind of balance there. Not everyone has moved out to the city, and no one uh, lives there anymore. Only left with their old folks so it's quite a nice sense of balance but you are definitely right if you are a really adventurous and uh, want to experience the long house you can stay at the long house and with options as well okay but yeah. uh, uh, meaning you can stay we have options where you actually stay with the locals in uh, the same not in the same room necessarily but in that long house itself yeah, yeah, so you have a common area where they put mosquito nets and you'll be sleeping on the floor. Or in some longhouses, they have uh, they, they, they built uh, units outside the longhouses, so you have a little privacy. And of course, the washrooms or the bathrooms are separate uh, that you need to walk to. It's nothing enclosed together at all. But the experience of this is that imagine flying 16 hours away and people welcome you to their home warmly and you sit and have dinner with them and you just met them today mm. yeah. so being able to uh, visit their home and learn about their life and probably how it was before and all the pictures of their ancestors on the wall and and even things like baby carriers or baskets that they used to the forest all could be uh, handed out from uh, their grandparents to them and they're still using it so it's totally different and the tribes of Borneo we are very unique because uh, we are believed to be known as the stocks of the Mongolian tribes before the end of the Ice Age. So when you travel around Borneo, you will notice that uh, oh, they have they look a bit like probably if you've been to certain parts in uh, bigger Asia, they look a bit like Chinese, but they are not, you know, and very fair and uh, things like that. Yeah, so. Uh, and uh, we are also very much into like um, because of the trade routes before traders from China used to stop in Borneo in the 1400s for trading, trading of things like beeswax and timber. And then we we actually get their metalware uh, or, or 
because before mining was was done on on the what in on our islands before uh so we we trade in uh jars things like that so you might see oh these are jars that i've seen on my travels in in probably vietnam or some parts of china so there's that little trace around asia you can see uh when you visit around the tribes yeah and uh the color red is very prominent amongst uh, our people as well just like the chinese and the red is also naturally available from tree saps that they used to take natural colors from before so in their okay. weaving and stuff like that yeah okay Anna Marie. and and just to end it off because we're closing down to our 15 Ooh. minutes <laughs> um, but to end it off a little bit of course it's not all nature and scenery and tribes and longhouses there is possible to do a beach holiday as well isn't it? oh so yes yes it. yes sorry for being carried away yes no, yes no, no we we have uh, international uh, the resorts in uh, Borneo as well, like the Shangri La, uh, and the local chains. And you can go off to the islands. Um, we are also home to one of the best dive spots in the world. If you've heard of Sipadan, and that is the southeasterly part of uh, East, uh, Eastern Sabah, which is the eastern of East Malaysia, uh, where uh, it's an atoll, and you can dive. And people have seen. Uh, rare sightings of turtles and sharks recently i don't know much about the shark but it was all in our local newspaper they've seen the mako shark apparently so I, there's something for me to read up uh, about for the last coming to 24 months we've had a lot of beautiful and wonderful sightings from the sea yeah and uh, also over at the eastern part was also part of an old extinct volcano before so you can imagine how beautiful the waters are over there exactly. yeah so that and means lastly you have a, yeah you know and that means actually it's very good for divers as well to come out there yes and yes do their it's also a dive well. spot yeah exactly. yeah exactly and of course with tourism uh the local people also prosper all around the country we have community-based tourism so it's not just the big players people like us in destination asia we also support uh, the local community in whatever we do and uh, uh visits places around so yeah it's a great place to come do yeah. consider exactly and, and like i said we have the possibility at the moment you have the little sandbox in langkawi so you're seven days yes. with testing and walking yes. around or being at the beach resort for seven days getting tested every day but yes. that's an option to get over at least to to borneo yes. these days yes and when things open up and we get more open borders we are going to get back to you as well so we can talk more about speak maybe Yes. On, on board yes. as well. So yeah. we're gonna have another talk, definitely. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much, Thank you. For, uh, yeah. for joining us today. Um, My um, pleasure. Good afternoon or good evening with you. It's good yes. evening with us, but uh, good afternoon for you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye.